I am Tori Gerbig, CEO and founder of Pink Lily. I'm Chris Gerbig, president and co-founder at Pink Lily. We are a husband and a wife team that started our business right inside our home here in a small town in Kentucky and grew it to a multi-million dollar brand. I grew up in a small town here in Kentucky. I am one of five, so I have three older sisters and a younger brother. My mom was a school teacher and my dad was a factory worker. My mom worked so hard growing up. She always had numerous jobs besides teaching. She was a cheerleading coach. She would do after school and summer school programs just to make sure that we always had food on the table and was provided for. And I definitely got the hardworking ethics from my parents. I definitely do think that because my mom was such a hard worker that it inspired me to want to do more with my life. She definitely always talked to us about going to college and getting a degree and working hard to become something of yourself. Growing up, I had an all-American childhood. Uh, both parents worked corporate jobs. Uh, I was the youngest of three children. Uh, I grew up playing baseball and basketball. So from a young age, uh, my parents kind of told me that you need to be a hard worker in life. They sat me down at, at 14 and said, hey Chris, if you expect to have a car or go to college or have spending money, you're gonna need to get a job and pay for that yourself because um, we're not gonna do it for you. So at 15, I got my first job at a country club and I actually worked full time and I, I kind of continued that same thought process through life. So I went to Western Kentucky University and got a degree in marketing and sales. I went to Western and graduated with a finance degree and then two years later I went back to school and did my master's. I thought marketing was really cool and I know I knew I wanted to do it. I'm sure you wanted to do something in finance. Yeah, I just never plan on being self-employed. Yeah. I graduated in 2009 as a distinguished alumni and was so excited to have a marketing degree and head out into the world to figure out what I was going to do with marketing and branding. Initially, when I graduated college, I actually had no idea what I wanted to do. Of course, it was in 2009, right whenever we were having a recession and it was impossible to get a job and actually make decent money. I had been working um, at an insurance agency for a few years prior to graduating, but I also was a server at a restaurant. I worked two jobs all throughout college. I decided just to go straight into insurance after college, and I worked for a company for five years. My goal was to one day become either a pharmaceutical sales rep or some sort of outside selling, but not really insurance. So in 2011, we started an eBay store. You um, found random things for us to sell, like yep. golf clubs and Halloween masks. Yeah, lots of random stuff. <laughs> random stuff, but we would have, you know, 10 or 15 orders a day on eBay. Our eBay store was called Lucy's Little Boutique. Yep. Lucy's my dog. <laughs> yep. So um, we did that for a year or so off and on. Of course, this was just a night little side, not in side hobby. We would also sell like my mom's antique plates and yeah. random stuff. We realized that e-commerce was a solid business. Yeah. And we, that was the first uh, chance that we had to kind of dip our toe in the water and see, see how well e-commerce worked. But the eBay store was Tori's idea. Um, we had identified some vendors that sold clothing and accessories online and we reached out and, and got a few small POs and started selling them on, on Facebook and eBay. Uh, it was mainly like gloves and scarves and hats and at the time chevron scarves were really popular so tori was kind of known around town as a scarf lady there for a while fast forward a couple years later we were um trying to get back into it after i had jackson and we wanted to do a little bit more with ebay etsy and just to be able to pay off loans and debt so we started the ebay store back up that summer right right and then we started a little Etsy store and that's when we also launched a Facebook group. So the Facebook group happened while I was on maternity leave with Jackson 
and we named that luxury for less. It quickly turned into fashion um, because online boutiques were just starting to become a thing and I was spending so much money online. We got our reseller's license, started buying wholesale and just selling the items at a more affordable cost to the customers, all via Facebook group. I was manually PayPaling invoice people. Um, you know, they would come shop out of my trunk of my car. It was very much for local people. I did ship some orders, but it was so manual. It was basically me posting, answering customers questions, all doing this at nighttime and on the weekends and just yeah running and ourselves into the ground i realized it was taking a lot of time yes. and tori was having to meet people in cbs parking lots on saturday and there's always random people coming to our house to pick up goods and yes inventory was starting to fill up so i said why don't we just start a website and you can ship these to people right and save us a lot of time yeah. save us a lot of the hassle and that was kind of the idea for having an official e-commerce website so from there, we wanted to, we had to decide on a website name, and I feel like that was the trickiest part. What was the first actual boutique name we came up with? Southern Dazzle. That was bad. <laughs> we obviously didn't want to limit it to just the South, and um, we started really just brainstorming on what names, what words, what really meant something to us. Pink is, has always been my favorite color, but a few years prior, my mom had went through uh, chemo and radiation. She had breast cancer and was diagnosed in 2011. So she is 10 years strong, a survivor now, that we wanted to do something in honor of her. Chris and I had walked a Susan G. Komen walk a few years prior, and we you know, were decked out in pink head to toe. And of course, I just wanted to incorporate my favorite color for the person that you know I respect and look up to. The lily part came from my great my grandmother who had passed away just a few years prior. She always had beautiful flower gardens in her at her house, and I remember always helping her with that every single spring. Easter was her favorite holiday. She always had Easter lilies and just you know tulips and every flower that you can think of in the spring she had them in her gardens, and we just kind of pretty much put the two of the the two words together to come up with pink lily so it definitely has a meaning and it's not just thrown together without you know something behind it it's, it's representing the two women that really were influential in my life so we launched the website pinklilyboutique.com at the time in january of 2014 both of us were still working full-time so i left my job in april of 2014 four months after we launched pink lily and we definitely weren't very scared at that point in time because we still had your salary to rely on insurance everything like that through his job right. but then come a few months later we decided that you go ahead yeah we knew it was coming we knew the business was growing fast enough to where it would offset our corporate jobs and every night we would sit home and look at today's sales and look at uh, the profit we made and compare that with a corporate salary and we knew that if it got to the point where the business started to really offset our corporate salaries, it was time to leave. And May, June of 2014, we realized that we would be okay. At my corporate job, I realized that I was going to work every day and doing conference calls with web designers, advertising agencies, and for the not website. really, yeah, for the, for the boutique, and not really putting in the work that I should have been doing on my corporate job. Oops. So at that point, I realized that it's probably time to focus on Pink Lake full time. When I was at Western uh, getting my finance degree and then later on when I was getting my MBA, I envisioned myself as just a, a corporate executive. So when I told my parents that I was going to quit my good paying corporate job and sell women's clothing with Tori, uh, they didn't think it was a good idea, obviously, and they tried to talk me out of it. Uh, but again, we knew that we were onto something, we knew we had a good thing going, so um, we decided to try it out and see what happened. So when I was leaving um, my corporate job at Dollar General headquarters, uh, our vice president of supply chain found out about my plan and our goal and, and he pulled me aside and said, you can continue working in a place like this and probably have a good life and make a good income, but there's going to be a limit, he said, or you can quit while you're young and put all your cards on the table and try this out and see what happens said your business might fail, but it might not. So the risk is gonna be higher, but the reward is also gonna be higher. So if I was in your shoes, Chris, I would do it and, and see what happens. 
I really appreciate what he had to say and I took his advice, and dove right in and I'm glad I did. Okay, the whole process of running a business out of my home was just chaos, basically. We were packaging orders on our dining room table. My sister-in-law, Merritt, would come over and sit in the little bitty office all by herself, shut the door, and answer her customer service emails and print out labels one by one, copy and pasting them. Do you remember the first time you told me about wanting to own a clothing store slash company? No, I honestly do not remember that. That's really funny. So. We were at Tiffany's house and we were out front. It was Brady and Trey's birthday. I mean, you were sitting in these white, I mean, like, I don't know why I vividly remember this. I literally this so do well. not remember this story. You're gonna remember it as soon as I mention this one thing. So we were sitting there and it was Western's homecoming was coming up. And we were looking on websites, actually one specific website. Do you remember now? No. Oh, you're nodding like, yeah. No, I don't remember. <laughs> so you, we were looking at websites to talk about what we're gonna wear to homecoming for okay. that weekend. And you looked up the Blue Door Blue Door Boutique. Okay. And you were like showing me. I that's where I got the homecoming outfit from. Yes, exactly. And you were like, this, you're like, I would love to like do this one day. Yeah. And I was like, how are you gonna do that? And you're like, I don't know. I'm just I would just think it would be really cool to like start the company yep. and there's not many of these online boutiques. And that was like I remember so vividly that entire conversation. I don't know why. Like it just like and then you all started luxury for us. I was like I don't even know how she would do this. Like, how yeah. would she make this work? Like, and I was like interested, and we were that's like, that's maybe why I remember it so well, is because I was so intrigued by you talking about it, and like, yeah. and then like you just started making it happen, and then here we are. We did the thing. Now here we are yeah. doing the thing. Five years, six. How many years? Seven, six. It'd be seven in June. Seven years January. later. Gosh, that's insane. I know. So I was down to a couple days a week selling insurance. She would come over and help with customer service first. Yep. I think. Oh no, packaging. So she texted me one afternoon and I had come over like a couple of times to help with you had those um, like parties sales. that Tiffany yeah, had done. Yeah, we would have like little parties and yeah. little sales at my house. So I came over like a couple of times to help with those. She texted me and she was like, you want to come help package? And I remember I was like, I don't anything to do, sure, why not? So then I just started helping, and then like, it was like part time, I had three different jobs that I was doing, but so I would just go in my spare time to help them out. Like, I would go at night, or go in the morning, like just, or on the weekends, and then it just got to where they were needing more help, like the orders just kept coming in, and I was like, well, I can quit this job and come help some more. So then it just like, slowly trickled into where I was just there all the time, like just working five days a week or six. Actually, I worked more than five days a week. So I would go in their office, they had a little office, and I would go in their office and I would shut the door because Jackson would be like walking and crawling around, so I would like shut the door so he couldn't come in. I would just literally take a package and I would copy the address from the website, put it on the stamps.com, print it out, and put it on there. One I did that for every one, 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 like 100 orders a day. Single, yeah. And the UPS guy would bring like loads of boxes to yeah. the house to unload. Like it was, a, it was like <laughs> abnormal. Like everybody, all the neighbors would be like, what are they doing? Like, yeah. It was a lot of boxes. We would go like somewhere and then come home and there'd be 15 boxes yeah. just stacked up taller than my door. And I'm like, okay, we might want to move out of this house eventually. Yeah. So Merritt would come over every single day. My mom would come over yeah. every single day. Okay. She would kind of help with Jackson. And my sister would come every now and then too to help. Y'all would come, you would come over every single day. We'd order Fazoli's for lunch, or not Fazoli's. Uh, Mancino's. It was Mancino's. <laughs> yeah. We were at our house through July. Finally by July, we were like, okay, we have to get somewhere outside of this house, like a warehouse space. The business was really starting to pick up. The entire house was full of inventory. Our one-year-old was walking around pulling clothing racks on himself. Mm -hmm. um, Merritt was in our guest bedroom working on the computer in there, and the whole house was literally just inventory and clothing racks. And Chaos. I said, we've got to get out of here. We've <laughs> got to find somewhere to operate. So we found this 1,800-square-foot abandoned hair salon in town, and uh, that was our warehouse in the beginning. So then finally, yeah. Chris decided to leave his job in July, and then that's when we signed the lease on our first warehouse space to get out of the house and Actually, to actually maybe run it more like a true business. Yeah. <laughs> we were in a very close vicinity. I remember them being so excited and Chris was like, I have the key. We had a painter we hired on Craigslist to paint it all hot that. pink. Oh, I wanted it pink, 
But then we had like 10 racks full of clothing when we first moved in. Yeah. And then we had those, um, Chris and his dad installed counters in the back for yeah. us to package on and for us to have our little desk to print our labels yeah. and to do the packaging. And at that point in time, it was just you, my sister, and my mom. And we were full of clothes and of course, we were on top of each other. On top of each yeah. other, even after the first few months. Right. And when we first moved in, obviously we had room. And then within like yeah. a month, like maybe a little bit more, but not much longer. It was like climbing over stuff to get things. <laughs> I signed a two-year lease because I didn't think we could afford a one-year lease because the payment was higher. It was so scary. And we, um, we outgrew it within two, three months. Right. And then by November, right before Black Friday, we actually had outgrown it so much that we moved to our 3,000 square foot warehouse. So then we had two rents to have to pay for, but the sales luckily were coming in even more and offsetting the, the rents that we had to pay in the overhead. Well, I remember in 2016, we we had so much inventory coming in, we couldn't store it in the traditional boxes that we had. So we had to get this garment on hanger solution, which was a bunch of pipes welded together and it was 15 feet tall. And it stored all the inventory because the inventory would come in on hangers and we had to store it that way for picking and packing. And the company we bought it from said, don't worry about anchoring it to the ground. It'll be fine because the weight of the clothing will help. I lost my life. Will help, um, you know, distribute the weight and everything's fine. Well, that wasn't the case. So we had two employees picking and packing over there and all of a sudden I just see the bottom legs of this huge contraption just start spreading out and I'm, I'm 50 feet away. But I just see this entire thing come collapsing down with these steel metal pipes. Oh, it's not. It was, it's funny now, but it was it so was, scary. It was terrifying because I thought the two of our employees died. They didn't, luckily, but it was it was a very scary situation. One thing I remember about that warehouse was, of course, we ran out of space so fast, but we shared an office, and it was so horrible because, I mean you're like in a very small vicinity and then right outside of our door was the monogram machine and the heat press and it was running in our ear all day long and we literally like would just look, look at each other and he would be like why are you spending all the money and i'm like we have to have clothes to sell and it was fun and then obviously they started using our office because we ran out of space yep. to store stuff so then we were like just sitting in this tiny little office staring at each other with clothes all surrounded yeah at that point, it wasn't as scary as it was the first time when we moved um, because we could recognize that the business was continuing to grow month after month after month. So um, I got a hold of my realtor friend and we looked for some warehouses in town. Couldn't really find anything that suited our needs. We found three acres that were empty in this industrial lot and we decided just to buy it and build phase one of our fulfillment center, a 25,000 square foot building. And we moved operations here in um, 2016. So in 2014, towards the end of the year, when we finally moved into our hair salon warehouse, um, the company was doing about a million dollars a month in revenue. And we had gotten there pretty fast. Fast forward a couple years when we were in uh, the second warehouse moving into our, our current facility, we had 50 employees, we had crossed $50 million in revenue, and we were continuing to grow month after month. When we moved here in 2016, we had about, you said 50 employees? It was about 50 employees. Which was high. Mm -hmm. And we really didn't think we would grow that many more employees, but right. things happen. Right. So the business was still growing at that point. Uh, each year we would add on 10 to 20 employees, and we kind of hovered between that 50 to 100 mark for about a year and a half. In 2019, we crossed um, 100 employees. This year, we crossed 200 employees, and right now, we're right about 250, 260. And I remember when we moved in here, you said, we will never outgrow this warehouse. Yep. I said, we will never outgrow this warehouse. And within 18 months, we had outgrown the warehouse. Luckily, I had bought extra acreage here, so uh, we started on phase two of our facility and added on another 25,000 square foot. So we'd have 50,000 square feet to operate. And again, at that point I said, this should last us five to 10 years. Uh, it lasted us two. So currently we are at capacity in this building and we just signed a lease for a 160,000 square foot building right up the street. Earlier this year, we realized that we were running out of space 
So we bought a bunch of new racking and new organizational equipment and, and inventory storage to try and get us as far as we could. But within two to three months of that being installed, we realized that we were just growing too fast. I mean, we've, we've been doubling uh, our sales and revenue year over year for the past few years. So um, about three months ago in middle of 2020, we realized that we were completely going to outgrow the space quickly. So I started looking at other warehouses, other facilities, what's the options that we have, and luckily I landed on a, a perfect building right up the street from our current space. It's 162,000 square feet, which is almost four times the size of what we're at now. Uh, and we're actually gonna keep both buildings. So the whole fulfillment side of the business, the picking, packing, shipping, inventory, is all gonna be at the new place and all the offices are gonna stay here. So in that six, six and a half short years, you've gone from a packager to the marketing director. Now, do you remember all the positions that so, you even had? Well, no, probably not. I don't either. <laughs> but what were all your positions that you Well, actually, here? no, no, I first started out as a model. Oh, model. yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I packaged, then I helped inspect some. That was fun. I went to Cus. Well, I don't. That's the pack. Like the doing the labels is not a job, but that it felt like right. a job. Customer service, marketing assistant, to marketing manager, and then marketing director. For the marketing assistant, you basically started with Facebook, yeah, and Pinterest. I start Facebook, yeah. And then took over Instagram, and then we added Megan, mm -hmm. and we added more team members, and then you just started taking over. Making sure everybody did their job. Yeah. So many jobs now, to do. Now here we are. So did you ever think that you would be a marketing director in Bowling Green, Kentucky? No, I never even like imagined like doing, like I always thought I would do something with animals. So <laughs> marketing is like not, I'd love it, but it's like not what I thought at all for my future. My favorite part is the fact that we did it in kind of a small town where there's not a lot of, um, e-commerce businesses there's really no e-commerce business here so it, it's been kind of cool to explain to people what that is and how this thing grew from just a living room startup to this you know e-commerce apparel powerhouse that we are now my favorite part would be that we've done it with no experience we didn't have any experience with e-commerce obviously in 2011 2012 nor did we have any experience running a business being a ceo being a president of a business Another thing that, that I'm proud of is the fact that we did this without any kind of outside investment or funding. So a lot of startups you hear about nowadays, they raise initial funding in the beginning and then they've got millions of dollars to play with and grow the business. We didn't have that for us. I mean, we used our own money. We put, we put in a few thousand dollars of our savings that we have and we grew it from day one. And not only that, but it's been profitable since day one. We've never lost money. We've never had to take out emergency loans to pay for payroll or anything like that. It's continued to grow, be successful, and be profitable for seven straight years now. In 2018, uh, we made the Inc. 5000 list for fastest growing private companies in America. So that was pretty cool that we were one of the fastest growing companies in, in America. There's a lot of things that I want my kids to take away from us running our own business. But the one thing that I particularly care about the most is probably for Riley and Reese, my two daughters, to really look at me as a mom and being a CEO and a female entrepreneur and for them to just be inspired to do whatever they want to do in life. If there's one thing I'd want them to learn, it's it's not so much related to being self-employed or, or owning a company, it's just that you're not going to get anywhere without hard work. So again, we started this thing out of the living room, had no experience, but we kind of had our backs against the wall with bills and a mortgage and all that and we had no choice but to work hard. So I want my kids, whatever they decide to do in life, if they want to open a company or if they want to be, you know, in any kind of job, um, hard work's really the only answer. In the beginning, I kind of handled everything behind the scenes. So I got the website off the ground, I registered the business, I got the bank accounts and the, the shipping contracts activated, I, I signed the lease on the warehouse. Uh, I kind of put everything together so that Tori could just focus on selling clothes and make sure all the different pieces of the puzzle fit together so that she can do what she's good at, which is buying and selling and marketing. I just basically picked out the clothing, focused on the marketing, focused on the branding, and then uh, oversaw the customer service. So those are still the things that I focus on today. 
I am over the buyers. I ha work hand in hand with the marketing team on our marketing efforts and oversee the whole customer experience side of things. And then you basically oversee everything else from operations, hiring, finance, Everything yeah, that is part. outside of the marketing, sales, yeah. and fashion part yeah. of it. Finance and accounting, human resource and staffing, uh, operations and fulfillment, and then any kind of like IT related issues, yeah. and then the warehouse itself. So, continually moving new warehouses, I've kind of had to spearhead that to make sure we're <laughs> signing that every new leases. Every other year and, thing. And we have enough space. If I had to give advice to somebody who was starting a business, I would tell them not to do it halfway. I would tell them to dive in both feet and, and try it out. Uh, I feel like if, if me and Tori would have tiptoed around and just kept this as a side business for too long, it, it never would have realized its full potential. So for someone out there who, who really wants to try a business and thinks that they have what it takes, I would say dive in and give it 100% and see what happens. So my vision for the future of Pink Lily is for and my goals is for it to become a household known name and brand. We started out as a very small local boutique and focused more so on, you know, the South and we have grown that so well, but my goal is for it to be international for everyone all over the, the United States and outside of the country to know Pink Lily and to recognize the brand. I also want to build up a community that inspires and encourages confidence in all size women, all diversity, all, all women in general. We want to be a place for them to come together and to just really feel appreciated and confident to wear our outfits and hopefully inspire others to also follow their dreams. My vision for the future or the next five years would be just to continue doing what we're doing, continue working hard, hiring good people, and see how big we can get this thing to grow and, and see what happens. If you would have asked me five years ago what my plan would have been, I don't think it would have included where we're at now. We've kind of surpassed all expectations. So for me, it's exciting to keep doing this and just seeing what happens five years down the road.